So, Matt. Yeah? Today is a great day for us in particular. Do you want to know why? Why? It is the five-year anniversary of our Facebook friendship. <laughs> really? <laughs> I logged onto Facebook and I saw that and I was like, really? Wow, okay. That's not that big of a deal, being Facebook friends with someone. I'm pretty sure we were friends longer than that. We knew each other before for, for more than five years. I guess we um, just put off being friends on Facebook. Well, to be fair, we didn't really get to start knowing each other properly until kind of Christmas time, wasn't it, I think? Probably. It's when it's the, it's the screening of those films. So, basically, what we did is we used Facebook how it should be used. We added someone as a friend when we were actually friends with them. Yeah. N- not, oh, I m- met you once at an outing several years ago, and I know your first name, so I'm going to add you as a friend. No, no, we waited till we were actually friends. I mean, at the beginning of uni, I did try and add people on Facebook just to remember their bloody names. Yeah. But then I dropped that after, like, the first week. I'm just like, no, I can't be bothered with this. I, and then I end up with, like, useless people on Facebook who I wasn't friends with. I just added yeah. them so I'd remember who they were. I actually, I forgot that I, I added Annie. <laughs> you didn't know you were friends with Annie? No, but, um, uh, you know when um, the first time I, I saw you again after it was a year or so? Yeah. I remember suddenly realising I was friends with Annie on Facebook, and I had been for, like, nearly a year or so. I never You realized. were friends with Annie on Facebook yeah, longer I... than you were friends with me. No, not... No, it was after that, because we didn't meet until um, that... Was it your birthday thing, where we went on the roller Oh, coast? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I brought I, everyone... To, I always yeah. bring people together. Went to Thought Park, had a good day. That was a nice yeah. day. Yeah, we we, saw, we added each other, even though we, we didn't actually speak that much that time. <laughs> We both, we it's both just like, the polite thing to do. We were both like the shy, kind of nervous people. So you, you gravitated towards one another online rather than face to face. Yeah, I think we actually spoke to each other on Facebook. No, you just had each other as a friend. It's yeah. just collecting them, yeah. scooping them up and collecting them. That's what a lot of people seem to do on Facebook. To be fair, that is the way I like my friendships. Right, I mean, to actually deal <laughs> online with online and not in real life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, you don't have to talk to them. You're just friends. You know, there you go. I have certain friends that I talk to and then others that I don't, but mm. if there's a film I want to watch and there's no You're one for me to watch it with, with yeah. yeah, that's why I'm friends with them. Yeah. <laughs> if there's you a film I want to watch. Yeah, you. I know. I'm the type of person that will know someone, I think we've spoken about it before, going up to random people and asking them if they want to go to the cafe, even though I've only met them once or like we've sat in a class together, we don't really know each other, just because I'm hungry. Yeah. It has nothing to do with me wanting to hang out with them, just because I'm hungry. Yeah. So sometimes I want to watch a film and my friends are busy, the ones I actually want to hang out with. So I go out with other people Yeah. that I could care less about just because I want to watch the movie. And actually, I think you're doing that with me next month, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, this month. This yeah. month. In a couple of weeks' time, Oh, Matt, oh yeah, yeah. To be honest, you, whenever you come down, we waste the day just in Starbucks or somewhere. We might as well do yeah. something. It's and that film looks good, so... I mean, the only problem is, last time I went to watch a film with you, I got cramp you in got my cramp. leg. Yeah, when we went to see Pacific Rim, I got cramp in my leg. It's really <laughs> annoying in the cinema, because you can't stand up, because then you're getting in people's way, or their view. Right, I thought, I thought you were going to say something that was my fault. It was like, oh, last time you went, I went to the cinema with you, you were masturbating in the back row, or something like that. And, <laughs> okay, so you got Which a cramp. one of us was masturbating? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought I thought you were going to say something like that. And I was, just like, I, was, I was just preempting it. I was like, what did I do? I mean, when did I go to the cinema with him? What did I do in the cinema? Mm. So I, was like, I didn't do anything. You, like, you got a cramp. I think, I think see, it's, it, you'd been more likely to be masturbating because you like Del Toro. Well, it's, you I don't, actually would have been masturbating. I can't masturbate over just film. a film because I like the director. I mean, it will be great if I could, mm. but I don't. Not all the time. Well, we've already talked about masturbating at the cinema. You call it masturbating, I call it masturbating. Uh, I, pro- I pronounce the R in the... Uh, masturbating, <laughs> there's no R. I, yeah, but that's, that's how you meant to pronounce it. No, you it's say M-A-S. Bath, not bath, you know, so it's masturbating. <laughs> no, it's not. Masturbating in the bath. It's masturbating. No, it's masturbating. Oh my God, I can't believe we're arguing about how to spell <laughs> masturbating. How to spell how to pronounce masturbating. I thought you meant to be southern. I'm not Southern. Well, it's, it's a very a Northern thing what? to do, to say ah instead of ah. What are you talking about? Masturbating. Masturbating? Yeah. Do you say scones or scones? Scone. Okay, that's the correct way to say it. Yeah, but Northerners call it scone. 
No, no, no. I know people that call it scone. People that I, well, grew up in my general area, they call it scone. That's wrong. I know. It's a scone. It's a tragedy. I know. It's just, it's wrong. I mean, I, I just don't get those kind of people. Yeah, I don't share my Battenberg with them. <laughs> it's Bartenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's just call it Bartenberg yeah, from now on. Bar- Bartenberg sounds like a Nazi cake, though, if I'm honest. To be honest, I thought Battenberg was from the Nazis when I was younger. I don't know why. Yeah. It just sounded like it was from <laughs> from the Nazi Germany era. Uh, yeah. Battenberg. It, it, does, it does sound like the kind of thing they'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Battenberg, by the way. <laughs> I don't h- hold any ill feeling towards the Battenberg race of cakes. Yeah. I think they're perfectly delicious in small doses because it's very sweet yeah. because of the icing around it. I mean, it's so sweet. I mean, it's diabetes in a tr- on a tray. Pretty much. But, oh, yeah. it's, it is really nice, though. It's so nice, but it's so sweet. I, mm. I really feel like I'm from Burtonburg now. Might have to go I to know. Tesco after this. <laughs> I just hope it's still open. Yeah. Oh, I hope Tesco have Battenberg. See, it's kind of like, like it's, it's got shapes on, so it's kind of, you, it's not far it's away from a cake. Nazi flag on there. That's not the Nazi flag. Yeah, but they could have it on, I mean. I think um, it could. Nah, I wonder if, celebrate. like, you know, Nazi mixers did have cakes with a Nazi yeah. logo on it. Wouldn't anyway. Me. Anyway, so so we're not even ten minutes in. We've argued about masturbating and brought up Nazis. Yeah. This is a brilliant yeah, episode. This is, yeah, this is what we like. <laughs> well, this episode isn't about masturbating. It's masturbating. Or Nazi Germany and Battenberg. It is about Elizabeth Canning. Who didn't masturbate, as far as we know. <laughs> she may that? have done. And actually, I think the problem is that she didn't masturbate. She just went the whole hog. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> it's time for intro music. So you're not yelling it anymore. I can yell it if you want me to. No, you just, just, just not. Where we talk about stuff. Okay. <laughs> you don't need to yell it. So, Elizabeth Canning. Mm. She was a maid servant under the employ of John Wil- Wintlebury, who sounds like he would have a maid servant. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Well, what happened to names like that, Wintlebury? Yeah, we don't have those kind of classic names. No, we do anymore. No, there's another great name that's going to come up later. Is there yeah. Squire? No, no. Okay, all right. Well, that we'll we come to that bridge squire. when we cross it. No, no, no. We'll come to that bridge when we cross yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so Elizabeth Canning was born in 19... Not 19. That's one mistake I kept making when I was writing up my notes last yeah. week. Instead of 17, I was putting down 19. Yeah. And I kept confusing myself when I was looking over the notes because half of them are 19-something, half of them are 17-something. I was like, she lived a long life. <laughs> yeah, she was like 200 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Elizabeth Canning was born in 19... 19- For fuck's sake, I did it again. 17. 17, 34. And on the 1st of January, 1753, she claimed to have been kidnapped and held against her will in a sort of loft attic type place. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was kidnapped from near a hospital in Moorfields. Was that Moorfields Eye Hospital, by the way? Probably wouldn't have been Moorfields Eye Hospital in the 1700s. Uh, but yeah, probably not an eye hospital, but I think it's, it was a it's hospital. the same because it happened in London, didn't it? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I grew up. Yeah. Well, no, I live, like, not that far from Moorfields Eye Hospital. So many, so many weird things happened in my area. Like, there was mm. a baby farmer... That, well, that's an episode for another day. Yeah. I'm leaving people farm. at baby farming. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's a little cliffhanger for an episode that's going to come in, like, several months' time this is, when I eventually this, edit this, this and remember, oh, we should do the baby yeah. farmer. This isn't a plan of yours, is it? Baby, baby farming. farming. No, that means I need to actually handle babies. Right. I don't want to do that. Anyway, so she disappeared on the 1st of January, 9, 7, 1753. Mm. And then she reappeared on the 29th of January so, of the same year. Yeah, so pretty much at the whole her month. mother's house. Yeah, almost the whole month. In her missing 29 days, she claims that she was kidnapped by two men next to a hospital that was not Moorfields Eye Hospital at the time <laughs> <laughs> and taken to the house mm. in uh, 
it, well, she, she says it was in Hertford Road. But if you're kidnapping someone, why wouldn't you blindfold them? Like, how would she know? Yeah. Um, but she did have something put around her, didn't she? If I remember right. She must have... Well, any decent kidnapper, they're not going to take her to a place without blindfolding her, especially if it's a place that she's familiar with. I mean, that's just yeah. silliness. Every time I kidnap someone, I usually blindfold them. Or drug them. It's easier, actually, drugging them. Put them in a car. Well, an Uber, because I can't drive. And then we yeah. head off to where I'm keeping them. Ah, see, here's what happened. Apparently she was partially stripped. So. Yeah, but I thought that happened later. No, that's, that's the two men partially stripped her. And they robbed her. Okay, so, so, yeah. so these two men partially stripped a lady... In the mm. 1700s, and people and and took her to a house. There were no cars, like they had to have carried her, or dragged her, or something. Took her to a house without anyone noticing. Ah, uh, but but that's the thing. People did notice. They just didn't do anything about it. Did they notice? I didn't. Yeah, people. Okay. Were, by, by the way, listeners, I did not read Wikipedia for this episode. I decided to be a good researcher and read other things. Oh, well, I read articles <laughs> as well. Okay, I just read some articles and that's it. So yeah. there's probably going to be gaps in my knowledge. Let us know what your insight is, Matthew. Well, from, from what I read, um, yeah, she was party stripped, robbed, and they hit her on the temple. So she was. Oh yeah, I read that, but I th- again, I thought that happened after they'd taken her to that no, house for some reason. Um, no, this is before that she went to the house, and so she's kind of like slightly unconscious but she awakes while they're taking her and they basically they forced her to walk to this house where this old woman lived and what um canning her explanation was that this old woman asked her oh, to yeah, be a no prostitute basically, basically uh, or yeah. as, as it's termed go their way which, yeah which is nice like way of why would she bother like this old lady why should they bother kidnapping someone to become a prostitute in the 1700s when they can get a poor street kid and raise her to be a prostitute. Wouldn't that be yeah. easier? And it'll be more. Well, they'll have more yeah. loyalty to them. Yeah, it's like raising I mean, it's Pokemon and stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah, like you just get one of those all. street kids or one of those street girls and yeah. pimp them out. Yeah. Rather than kidnapping someone, taking them against their will, they could pretend to be a prostitute for a while and then plan their escape. Yeah. See, that's what Tarman would do. So. That's what I usually do. Yeah. Yeah. Your your prostitution. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, let's move on from that. <laughs> anyway, so she, yeah, so this old lady, she tried to, well, asked her to be a prostitute. Mm. And Elizabeth, of course, because she's a lady of virtue, refused. Yeah. And was yeah. forced into a loft space, attic place that she described to people when she got back. And the yeah. way that she, she says that she came out of, yeah, she escaped through a window. It took her 29 days to figure out that she could escape through the window. Yeah. Why would they leave an open window that yeah, she had access you, to? You've got to be a bit unobservant to kind of not notice the window. Yeah, if I'm kidnapping someone, I'm boarding up any sort of exit. I wouldn't put her in an attic, I'd put her in a basement. Yeah, well, we know about you and your basement, so... <laughs> but then again, my attic on. doesn't have windows, so that's, that's a plus. But it's cold, I don't want to keep anyone there. Yeah, but plus that would make me inhospitable, there. really. I, mm. I might kidnap people, but, you know, I want them to be warm. They're, they're no use dying of frostbite, are they? No. Anyway, <laughs> so she said that she escaped through the window and made her way to her mother's home. So I guess that's how she would actually know that she was in Hartford Road, really. She made her own way back. Um, so um, she was in pretty, you know, pretty bad condition um, when she got there. Yeah, well, she claimed that uh, she'd been just pretty much given water and, I think, bread to eat. Yeah, would you be able to survive on that for a month? Because well, it would look, all just bloat you, wouldn't it? it wouldn't, there's a bit of debate it, like, about bread that. Isn't giving you the no, bread wouldn't give you the nutrients you'd need to survive for that long. No. So unless she was, like, a hefty woman and she had loads of fat storage. She, she was described as being a bit plump from what mm. I read. Yeah, but so. then again, it's still a month. Yeah, it's, it's quite like a long your body time. can only use so much fat that it has. I think the thing is, like, you can last. Well, you can last about like a week without food. I think. Yeah, but like me fasting, I feel like I'm all right. But yeah. then it gets towards the end. Of the, well, I'm talking about a summer day, not a winter day, because anyone could just not yeah. eat during a winter day. But during the summer days, when you get to, like, the last hour or something, you just want to kill yourself or you want to kill someone. Or I was actually watching John Richardson. He's doing stand-up. Yeah. And he was talking about how much he hated people. 
And then I was just like, I could so relate to that. And then he was just like, I, and then you have a sandwich and you realise you were just hungry. You can't handle it. You can't go that long without proper sustenance. A month is a very long time. Yeah. And bread is not nutritious. Well, well like bread, yeah, you can get some nutrients, but you need all seven to survive. Yeah. I mean, sure, you can go some period of time without it, but that's a month. It's a long time. Yeah. Well, I suppose that might explain her deplorable condition. Yeah, this is it's kind of a figure of a debate. Some people like believe but then she would could. she have been able to actually make escape out the window and make it back all the way to her mum's house? She'd be so weak, especially after she's in a cramped attic, not being able to move. So she's not she's all can't think of the word now stiff. Yeah, she can't really actually move properly. Her joints are probably aggravated, and she hasn't had any sustenance, so everything's going downhill. Would she have been able to make it that far? One thing I did read was that they were quite concerned she was going to die quite soon. So, yeah, they could. Yeah, they could. It could. That could be it. She just really hadn't hadn't eaten much. I I, I think bread might. You might just be able to survive a month. I'm not sure much I longer like than that. Bread. No, bread is a type of food that would bloat you and make you feel that you're full yeah. and feel that you're sustaining yourself, but it's not really. Your body needs more than bread and water to survive. Hmm. Yeah, we're not scientists. Science so, lessons so, yeah. with me. Science lessons with Tom. I, I got decent grade in my GCSEs. Yeah, I didn't... Yeah, it's only GCSEs. So they don't matter. Anyway... <laughs> Sorry if you're doing your GCSEs and you think they matter. They don't. Yeah. A-levels don't matter. Degree probably doesn't really matter either. Sorry, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Anyway, so she made her way to her mother's house. Her mother fainted at the sight of her <laughs> because she probably... Yeah, she probably thought she was dead. I mean, 29 days. Probably hope she was dead. <laughs> oh, I guess this is the era that people go missing and they just never come back. Because yeah. There's not really any way to track them. I mean, it's not like they can go through CCTV or credit card statements or send out nationwide bulletins or worldwide bulletins about missing people. This is the era that you could just disappear and no one would actually find you or take any notice. It's like the best era to live in. Yeah, also, she's a servant girl, so... There's There's no Facebook for them to check in either, so... No. Um, also, the fact she's a servant girl, people, people might... wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. Other than his, her employer, because I guess she's like his property. Yeah, but even then, you can just get another person in. So. Yeah, I know, but I feel like she's a maid servant. I feel like that's not that far from off, off from being a slave. I mean, I know they're paid as maid servants, but slave, their own. Well, their owners were owners. Yeah. So I feel like it's sort of the same thing. Kind of. I guess. And he was sort of very supportive of her. Yeah. And protective of her. Yeah. And we don't know how long they were actually working together because in this day and that day and age, kids started young. They started working as soon as they could, you know, walk. Yeah. So maybe he was working for her for a long time. Yeah. And she was maybe quite he was working. young when yeah. this happened. So. Yeah. She's like 18, 19. So. Or maybe it was like the, um, I can't remember now. An episode that we talked about, um, the Madame Two Sword one, where like oh, the mother yeah, was yeah. working for the person and then they, the, the child ended up working for the person because that happened a lot as well. Yeah. Like with slaves and servants. Yeah. So maybe he, he knew her whole life. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. That's it. We can speculate, but we do not know. Yeah. Anyway, where were we? Um, well, she, so she uh, returned, gone to her mother's, but because they were scared that she was going to die, they wanted her to identify the house that she'd been kept in. I thought they checked her out first, and then they took her to the house. Yeah, well, they checked her out, obviously. And um, there's a bit of stuff how it was quite bad, but she rejected the medicine at first. Not, not a li- well, literally her body did. Not She declined the medicine. Um, so, like, yeah, she vomited it up and stuff like that. Yeah, that would make sense if she hadn't eaten anything. Yeah. Um, they were still worried she was going to die quite soon, so um, they wanted her to kind of identify the house. And I think um, that the person that she was claiming he kidnapped her as well. And so she was took to Enfield Walsh. Who was... No, Enfield Walsh person. is a place. Okay, then. <laughs> um, I just got down the name of the person whose house it was. Um, could we just see 
is, is that. It was uh, Susanna Wells. I read first it was Mary Wells, yeah, and then that. I read it was Susanna Wells. Yeah, that, that confused me a bit as well. Yeah, it certainly doesn't help that another Mary was living in the house. But anyway, they, she picked the house of Susanna, Susanna Wells. I think John Wintlebury had had pushed her into picking it or something, right? Yeah, that's what I got from it. Yeah, too. I don't know why, but he did. Um, so that he... come to that later, David. I do, I do know a bit. I think it might be some think racially, but I don't yeah. care. I don't care. Um, I do care, of course, race relations, but I don't care about John Wintlebury that much. But anyway, mm. it was a house of Susanna Wells. Living in that house was a woman named Mary Squires and her children, I don't know how many of them were, there were a few, yeah. her children, and Elizabeth said that they were the perpetrators, they're the ones that kept her hostage. Yeah. Well, hostage, they're the ones that held her against her will. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Mary Squires was the person that um, Elizabeth fingered. <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I say. And I think it should be noted, as of right now, Mary Squires was a Romany woman. A gypsy. A gypsy, basically. Yeah. So, yeah... Not very in the popular. 1700s. Yeah. Not very popular now, really. No, to be honest. <laughs> anyway. And they didn't, they so didn't after... even have caravans back then, either. Yeah. No, they didn't. So how did they tra- How were they travellers? Uh, wagons and carts and stuff, wasn't it? Ah, uh, OK. All right. Well, when she got to the house, she reiterated the story, right? And it was completely different to what she was saying. Like, the house was... The attic, the space that she claimed to be living in was completely different to what she described. Yeah. And there was no sign that someone would have just jumped out the window. Yeah. So, that's where the inconsistencies start. Yeah. Yet, they still thought it was sufficient enough to arrest both Mary and Susanna on her testimony then and there, even though it made no sense given the place that they were actually in. Yeah. The location that she said it happened. So they arrested her. They arrested her. They arrested them, sorry. And the trial was held on the 21st of February, 1953. Not 19... 1753. Yeah. 1753. See, again, they did it so fast back then. Yeah, they're so much more efficient. Yeah. But it's a lot different. They didn't have lawyers or anything. Elizabeth sort of had to make her own case, right? It was sort of more like a civil suit than a, you know, yeah. what's the other one? What's the other one? I don't know. But it was more like I'm suing Matt because he called me a bitch <laughs> rather than Matt kidnapped me and held me against my will. Yeah. Yeah, the one that the government should be getting involved in. Yeah. And police and court systems should be getting involved in. So it was seen more like a civil suit. She had to make her own case. She didn't have a lawyer. I think she had to shell out money to actually do the case, right? Yeah. Try the case. I, I yeah. think um, I think the problem is back then. Even if you were, even if someone of a lower status kind of was given like legal support, it was often very kind of crappy. Yeah. It would be like literally the worst lawyer you were probably given. So, so she's probably on the same level as Mary and Susan, Susanna, anyway. Mm. So that one an even keel. Yeah, pretty much. So during the trial, Mary Squires did actually have an alibi. She was travelling through Dorset at the time, and she did have three witnesses that put her in Dorset at the time of Mary's, not Mary, Elizabeth's disappearance. There were more witnesses that tried to come forward, but were stopped from doing so by an angry mob who just referred to them as gypsies, I guess. Yeah. They wouldn't let them in. Yeah, and this comes to the fact that there was kind of... uh, Canning had quite a kind of devoted following, and they were Mm. known as the Canningites. Yeah, the other ones were called the Egyptians, which I don't understand because that's making gypsies longer. Yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, I, I didn't get that one either. It sort of reminds me of, um, I think it was in the 1940s in the south of America where I think someone was killed or someone was raped and a black boy was arrested and he was like 14 years old or something like that. Mm. And they just, the police just let him out and let the dot mob deal with him. Yeah. It sort of just reminded me of that. And, again, in that case, there's, like, no evidence that says that he did it. I think it was just one person that said, yeah, it was him. Yeah. That's another episode that we should do. I should really remember specifics about these things that I read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baby farmer, racial, racist mob. Yeah. Yeah. I give you little glimpses, and then eventually I will remember what I'm talking about, and we'll do an episode on it. Yeah. Yeah. So even though Mary Squires had an alibi and... 
Elizabeth's story was inconsistent. They were still both. They were both still convicted. Both um, Susanna and Mary. So Mary was convicted to death. She was supposed to be hanged, and Susanna was sentenced to six months in prison. Was it six months or was, uh, yeah, it was six, six months, months in prison. prison? And she was going to be branded, I think, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Does, it, does that seem a bit harsh for like kidnapping though? Yeah, I, because can. murderers don't get that much. Uh, murderers don't get it that bad. Well, some. Do, so even if she did do it, that's a bit. That's a bit strong. I don't know. Um, I, I was reading somewhere that her husband, well, Mary's husband, he was hanged just for theft. So yeah, it's, it's, was it, it's a bit was of a different it Susanna's, time. Yeah, Susanna Wells. She wasn't arrested for the initial kidnapping. She wasn't arrested for. Um, Keeping a disorderly house. Yeah. <laughs> that was, like, the first reason that she was arrested yeah. and then they indicted her for the kidnapping. That was a crime back then. If that was a crime now, oh, I would have been hanged already. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Keeping a disorderly house. I bet you that was not a crime for the men. That was a crime for the women. Possibly. But yeah. then sometimes men weren't always at home, so it's difficult. Well, one. yeah. Well, women had other shit to deal with as well. They didn't have period pads back then. Anyway. Yeah, but they had leaves. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I was wondering, like, what happened, like, in caveman eras? Did just people just let it flow? I guess and so, And then probably. I felt disgusted, and then I was just like, well, I might even think about this. I'm so glad I'm in the 21st Let's do century. Let's podcast on that. I mean, there's so, yeah, there's so many bad things that happen in the 21st century, and I wish I wasn't alive in this time, but then I remember feminine products. Yeah. And then I'm just like, oh, all is well with the world. <laughs> yeah. Who cares okay. about war and crime and race, um, race, 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 <laughs> race, yeah, <laughs> race, racial issues? Who cares about that stuff? Feminine items. Yeah, fe- feminine might. They're only reason to live, really, to be honest. Aren't they? Yeah. That's all I live for, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, can we move on now? So, so they were both found guilty, mm. but a man named Sir Crisp Gas- Go- Gascoigne... That's, the name, that's Gascoigne. the name I thought was quite... I, like, I just like the name Crisp. Yeah, no, this is actually the person the Crisp is named after. Mm. The Crisp? Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. I didn't realise No, that. no, I don't know. Oh. Like, probably not. I mean, I made it up, so if it is true... I am thinking <laughs> then, then that's a shocking coincidence. Yeah, it'd be great, though. It would be. This guy like, actually he seems like the perfect nice person guy. to name the crisp after. What? What? <laughs> Sorry, we talked over each <laughs> yeah. other and we didn't hear anything we were saying. <laughs> he sounds like the perfect person to name the crisp after, though. Yeah, it does. Uh, I, what yeah. I was saying is he sounds like quite a nice guy. And the reason why I say that is that he kind of, um, he noted, like, the inconsistencies. Yeah. He wasn't very satisfied. And he chose to kind of stick up for... Susanna, even though she was a gypsy, um, he was a sir, so you might think he would have been a bit snobby and kind yeah, of not. Yeah, but he was. But then again, he was the chief magist- magistrate. So if something, yeah, so if there was a mistrial or a miscarriage of justice, it wouldn't exactly look well on him. Yeah, even so, it's still a gypsy. And back yeah, then, that's they true. Really well popular, true. so it's still it's not popular now. No, true. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, no, he did, and he got like, he managed to talk to all those other witnesses that wanted to come forward. Yeah. And he managed to get a um, stay of execution. Stay, I thought it was called stay of execution. Apparently it's stay in execution. Yeah. So I've been thinking it was stay of execution for years. But it's stay in execution. He got a stay in execution for Mary, and, and eventually she got a pardon in May of that year. So, again, so quick to- this timeline is so quick. Yeah, I mean, like, in the 20th century, you have cases where it takes 30 or 50-odd years to get a pardon. Even now, like, uh, what's his name? Um, Alan Turing. He only got the pardon. Alan Turing. For, for, for Alan Turing. Oh, Alan Turing, yeah. <laughs> he only got the pardon for a crime that shouldn't have been a crime last year. Yeah. When he was convicted in the 50s. Ridiculous. To be honest. Uh, to be fair, he shouldn't have got a pardon. He should have got an apology. But that's, again, another podcast for another day. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, so uh, the Marys, Mary and Suzanne. I don't know if Susanna got pardoned, did she? Um, was Susanna, it just Mary? Uh, the pro- what I heard was Susanna did actually have to serve her sentence, and she got the branding Is as well. Is it because she kept her house untidy? Yeah. Oh, not, not, not Susanna. <laughs> no, because she, she was the one that was going to get hanged. It was her, apparently... She had no, no, a... Susanna was not the one being hanged. Mary was the one being oh, hanged. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, no, yeah, so Susanna, she had to go through with 
have branding and I think being in prison. Why? Um, we, I think it all it didn't happen in like enough time to get her off. So. But Mary got the pardon in May 1953. Yeah. The trial went to case in February on so. the 21st, the end of February. Yeah, so she she would have probably been in prison for a little while. So it didn't happen until okay. May. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, so mm. after that, Canning ended up being charged with perjury the following month. Again, so quick. I love it. Yeah, and yeah, and this is where the, uh, it really comes really like popular. It becomes like a proper like press thing. And yeah, it was like the Team Edward and Team Jacob. Yeah. Of the 1700s. You get... You've got the Canningites. And, and... the Egyptians. Yeah, the Egyptians. I still don't understand the name, but yeah. the Egyptians. And you get, like, people writing books. I mean, and, yeah, so... And Chris Gascoigne, he, like, wrote something about why. Yeah. And... But he ended up getting a lot of abuse. He got I mean, he was the mayor and the chief magistrate, yeah. right? And he got... People abusing him, hurling abuse at him wherever he went because of it. Yeah. He got attacked in his own, like, um, cart thing, whatever they had, like, what they travelled around in those days. That was a cart and horse, a horse and yeah, cart. That, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. And, um, and, yeah, and even at the trial, there's people throwing dirt at him and stuff like Would that. Would we be stone. allowed to do that to our mayor? Our mayor? Our mayor. <laughs> to, to Boris Johnson? Yeah. We wouldn't be allowed to do that. Actually, people do kind of swear at him <laughs> while he's on yeah, his bike. Yeah, that's swearing. It's not physical abuse. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, people throw eggs. That's kind of... I think that's the nearest we get. Yeah, but then we get arrested. Uh, I don't think you actually get arrested for throwing eggs. Yeah, because it's abuse if you physically assault someone. It's, phys- it's a physical assault. I don't know. Well, if someone threw an egg at Prescott, I don't think they got arrested. Well, probably because they didn't bring up charges, but you can be arrested for yeah, it. Yeah, possibly. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, he kind of, he really got it. The Canning Knights sound a bit, well, they sound a bit, yeah, mob, basically. It's because they're a bit racist, mate. A bit racist, mate. <laughs> yeah, and there was quite, um, they did stir up a lot of kind of, like, anti-gypsy hatred in their, like, writings and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so yeah, they, they sound, and they're a nasty lot. Yeah. That's why I don't like mobs, particularly. <laughs> That's because there's a lot of people in them. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't, don't like, like people. people. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, the Canningites and the Egyptians, it all came to head, but eventually the Egyptians won out. So Canning ended up being convicted of perjury, and she only spent a month in prison. So she spent longer in prison than... No, Sus- not she, didn't, she spent longer. She didn't even spend as long in prison yeah. as Susanna, who was prisoned falsely. Yeah. Um, so, there's definitely a bit then, of racism there, I think. But she did get... Yeah. She, it's white privilege, really. Although she did get... Trans, uh, she was sentenced to transportation for seven years. So. Yeah, which, if you don't know what that is, it's sending convicts to co- to work in colonies yeah. in other countries. Basically what we'd call deportation, I think, today. Yeah, but I sort of wish that we still had colonies now. When I read about that, I'd never even heard about that. Yeah. And it's like, I sort of wish we still had colonies so we can just send them off somewhere else. Yeah. To build houses in, I don't know, India. We India was a colony once, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And then, yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah, it wasn't all bad for her, seeing as though when she was over there, she got married and had a shit ton of kids. Yeah, and she... And lived happily ever she, after. She gained, like, a degree of respectability in that she married something, it's like, uh, I think it was, like, a He's like a grandson of... The, of go, um, governor or something of somewhere. No, I think it was, like, a grandson, wasn't it? Or grand-nephew or something. I thought it was a cousin. Oh, well. I'm pretty sure it was more distant, but whatever. Yeah, it was quite distant. Well, it was a relation to a politician, so that was some sense of respectability. Back then, now you'd get egged. Yeah. Yeah, she died died relatively happy. Yeah, Um, which isn't very nice. Yeah, well, then, 1700s. Mm. That's that's not not young. Yeah, People didn't live until their 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. People live into their 100s now. They didn't have that back then. No. And she had five kids, and she lived happily ever after, and she never revealed what actually happened in that month away. Which is a bit annoying. Which is a bit annoying that she actually got a decent life, even though she did a horrible thing to two people that... She may have possibly done a horrible thing that to two people that didn't do anything to her. Yeah, and it now comes to why. Why would she do that? Why, well, Carmen? In my, in my mind, it's, only, it's one thing, just the one reason. She was a maidservant. Mm. She was unmarried. 
she may have been promiscuous or she may have been sexually assaulted, I don't know, ended up pregnant and then she had to do away with it, have a backstreet abortion. Yeah. And possibly it went a little bit wrong, which is why she was away for so long. Mm. Or she actually gave birth to the child and, I don't know, gave it up. Yeah. That's what I think that happened. That's, like, the only thought that goes through my head. I don't think any of what she said happened. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty common view, I think, that she mm. basically got up the duff. Yeah. Um, but I think most of the theories surrounding her disappearance were something about her sex. I mean, yeah. the amount that I read about just her sexuality, people were obsessing over it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was a woman in the 1700s. She wasn't married or anything. She had, you know, she was a maidservant, so she was a lowly position. She wasn't educated. She, there's no way she could have had a child and raised it out of wedlock and have, have it be turn out okay. I mean, it could have ended up being a child from, what's his face, John Winterbottom, which is why he got so involved. Yeah. Because that happened back then as well. It happens now. Yeah. People get knocked up by their employers all the time. Left to do away with it. Yeah. That, that's the only thing that kind of get. you know, she's not particularly well educated. Would she be, like, smart enough to carry it all off? So that's why I think maybe John Winterbottom. <laughs> yeah. I think there's probably... Kind of, I, I kind of think it could have been staged, because there were sightings of yeah, two well, men I mean. kind of doing something to some poor woman. Who, who, I think they described the woman as a bit of a ruffian or... She didn't look very... Uh, she didn't look in a good condition. Well, that could have been anyone, yeah. really. I mean, 1700s, it's not like people are showering twice a day, are they? No, true. So... It, it doesn't... People lived in their own filth back then. Well, I, I think it could have possibly been her, but I still think that could have been staged. Yeah. Or I think people are just saying that they saw that. Yeah, it is possible, because... Possible that as a su- way of supporting... The Canning Knights Canning. probably did need some kind of evidence... Kind of yeah, counter. so I think people would have said that just to support the Canning case. Yeah. To me, there's not really any other option, because, like, I've read uh, other things, like, she was an amnesiac. Yeah. And she, she can't remember the last month. She can't remember the last month. She should have said that. Yeah. Rather than make up this really extravagant lie. If she was an amnesiac, she wouldn't have been able to make all that stuff up. If you're an amnesiac, guess what? You don't remember. You don't... It's, it's that you can't remember a period of time. It's not that you remember a period of time differently. Mm. Amnesiac means you don't remember. Well, I think the point some people say that there's a partial kind of amnesiac, so she could remember some of it, but not all of it. And so that would explain the, the stuff inconsistency. stuff that she remembered. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit far-fetched. Yeah. So, yeah, that, mm. I don't think people really buy that one, though. But because mm. what what amazed me is like um, there's people like uh, the Voltaire, who's like a famous philosopher. Even he wrote a book saying she basically got pregnant and she was trying to yeah. hide it. Yeah. So the only kind of credible one. Yeah, that's the, the, the only, only one that I believe one as well. I can think of. I, I admit this might not have happened. Abduction by aliens. Really? Why do you think that might not have happened? That's perfectly reasonable to think that could have happened. It is. But, you know... And then someone could have tried to probe her, hence her thinking someone was, you know, trying to get us into prostitution. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah an alien was trying to get her into prostitution. No, they tried to probe her, and then in her mind, she thought, oh, this guy's trying to put me into prostitution. Yeah. God, there's been... Or this old lady. Yeah, there's been quite a lot of probing and fingering in this episode, isn't there? <laughs> yes! Don't you find it weird that whoever gets kidnapped by aliens, they think they've been probed? <laughs> yeah, it, I just love the word probe. It makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, a, I mean, aliens is the only other credible theory, basically. I think that's very credible. I, I discard my theory now. I do not think she got knocked up and it went badly. I think she was adopted by aliens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was wondering why that hadn't been brought up. What, aliens? Yeah, it's perfect. Maybe we should get, write a book on it. taken away and he come back, like, 20-odd days later. It's got to be some kind of alien thing, hasn't it? Yeah. My God, that's it. We need to write a book. Yeah. You know, by the dork's deduction, the new evidence on Elizabeth Canning. There is no new evidence, but <laughs> it's a theory that we have. Yeah. And apparently that constitutes as evidence. Yeah. I find it really interesting that this is as quite as popular as it is. Because it still is. People yeah. still talk about and it, and they're still writing about it. At the end of the day, she didn't die, and we do, you don't really, you don't know what happened to her. I suppose that's the reason why it's still popular. Yeah. But it doesn't like it's not like 
amazingly kind of interesting in that... She was only gone for, like, 29 yeah. days as well. Not much it's not happened. even that long. <laughs> it's not like those kids that get kidnapped when they're 12 and they show up 30 years later. Yeah. It's not like that. That's actually quite interesting. Yeah. This 29 days... She could have just got... It was January 1st that she went missing. She should have, could have just gone out for New Year's. Yeah. Got really fucked up. It took loads of magic mushrooms. Took trips, shit ton of acid, and it took her a whole month to get over it. Yeah. That's it. That's the next theory. That's a trip. <laughs> yeah, even though it was the 1700s and they hadn't come up with it yet. Yeah. I'm sure they... The, the stuff that acid... Yeah, it's sure the stuff that LSD and magic mushrooms come from. That... that could have had some effect. Maybe she took a shit ton of those. Yeah. Yeah, so she was on a really bad acid trip, and it took her a while to get over. And then, it didn't take her the whole 29 days, but it took her a while to get over it. And then she was just like, oh, fuck. I've been missing. My mum's going to go batshit crazy. Yeah. My boss is going to go batshit crazy. So she spent the remainder of the time thinking of a story. Yeah. To tell them. So that's it. That's another credible thing that could have happened to her. Yeah. <laughs> acid trip. Perhaps he was trying to fake her death, but it just didn't go right. Yeah, maybe she was trying to fake her death and she gave up, and then she changed her mind. What she would gain from faking her death, I don't know. I mean, she was. She didn't even have to fake her death. Like I said before, it was the 1700s. She would just have to go out and not come back again. Yeah. Because that's what I don't get. You remember the canoe case? Um, yeah. Why did he come back? He could have. He said he wanted to reconnect with his old life, right? Yeah. But, I mean, why? Just do that anyway. <laughs> Maybe he ran out of money as well, so yeah. he was like, oh, well. But now he's in tr- in prison still, right? Yeah. And he's in debt. Yeah. Like, you d- you get more time in prison for defrauding, like, companies than you do if you murder people. Yeah. Obviously, I remember... So if you're going to commit a crime, just do the murder? Yeah. That's what it is. You know that, is it Bernie Madoff guy? Yeah, he's, he's never getting out of prison. Yeah, he's being treated, like, worse than a paedophile. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I mean, he ran a pyramid scheme, a scheme. He earned a shit ton of money out of it. Loads of other people earned money out of it. A load of people lost money. Isn't that the stock market anyway? Yeah. He basically defrauded a load of idiots. He yeah. was stupid. And he's getting punished yeah. for it. Oh, my. I yeah. think he's, that is I think he's basically, a good guy. That's what happens in the general yeah. stock market. Yeah. I mean... Some people gain money, some people lose it. I will never forgive him for this, though, though. What? Though, though. Uh, one of the people that invested with him was Kevin Bacon. Oh, no. Is that why yeah. he's doing all those bloody ads? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. We got him to blame for that, then. I like those ads. They're quite funny. They're a bit annoying. I like them. I, I don't I like, like going Kevin to the Bacon cinema. as such. It's just, I find those ads a bit annoying. Yeah, no, but a, a trip to the cinema isn't complete without... Those annoying E ads that like, <laughs> yeah. make no sense. Yeah, make no sense. One. My favourite one was when he was every character in loads of movies that he'd been in. Yeah. That was my favourite one. Oh, that was good, actually. Yeah. I do like that one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we, we anyway, so to um, I think we solved it. So she got pregnant by an alien and then went on a massive, massive acid trip. That, yeah. Basically, that That's summed it, it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So she got impregnated through probing yeah. by an alien. It's great we've Went on a massive acid trip, trip, trip and then spent a week or so yeah. trying to figure out a story to tell her family. That's it. Yeah. This is the most straightforward episode we've ever had. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Probably because at the beginning we said, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this. <laughs> Maybe we should do that more often. Yeah. Oh, man. So that... Okay. I don't know what to do. Usually we don't finish up this early as I well. I know. Yeah, wow. So... That's so what do we talk about now? Life? Battenberg again? I sort of still want some Battenberg. Might have to go to the shop after we're done with this. Yeah. I wonder, do Jews not like Battenberg? Why wouldn't they like Battenberg? It's delicious. Yeah, but if it's the cake of the Nazis, I mean... But, like, you know, it's still Battenberg. And we have no evidence that it's the cake of the Nazis. Yeah. It's the cake of old ladies because they like to make it. Yeah. Oh, I should make some. Ca- I've never made Battenberg. I want to make some Battenberg. Yeah, I don't know how you make it, actually. I don't, well, I'm finding you'd have it to from make... the shop, to be honest. Yeah, you no, you'd have it. to make the individual, like, slices of cake. Cut it in half. Yeah. Also, two different colours. A strip of two different colours. Cut them in half. Layer it, stay, stack them on top of each other. Put icing around it. Yeah. That's how you'd make Battenberg. So it's actually probably fairly straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, I might just go to Tesco. Yeah, you're not going to make it for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah. Is there really anything else that we can say about this? Not really. I mean, 
maybe I shouldn't. I just shouldn't edit this episode so it stays this length. Yeah. People are going to be wondering why it's so short. Yeah, we've actually done what we wanted to do and make a short one. Yeah. Well, no, it's not just a short one. This just means less editing, so I don't yeah. have an hour plus to cut we've off. We've self-edited, so... We've self-edited. We really have. Yeah. Wow, so, um, yeah. We yeah, really there really isn't anything more to say about it. So. <laughs> yeah, there really isn't anything more to say about it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's it. What? <laughs> so, if, um, if there's anything you want to say, Facebook, tweet, email... We did get, we have got a couple of YouTube comments. I mean, one called us a cunt, but that was all right because I think it got deleted. Um, <laughs> I think that was a Richie Edwards one. People didn't like that. We didn't know anything about the Manic Street Breaches, but it got deleted because he used the word cunt and you're not supposed to, I guess. Yeah. Another person commented on the Shakespeare yeah, one. They, I should they have probably read these about out. That, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they gave us a lecture about their. Sh- I think they were the Straf- Stratfordians. I think so. So they gave us a bit of a lecture. Yeah. Yeah, probably should actually bought some of these up, but um, I didn't bother. So thank you for those comments, though. We have read it, and we take on board that we're cunts. I'm okay I'm... with it. I already knew that before. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> I'm not a nice person. I know that. Yeah. So you could do all that, and um, I have a special message, actually, Matt. I hope you don't mind mm-hmm. for a certain someone that's out there listening to this. I just have one thing to say to you. Je n'ai pas de colette. That for That's it. That's for Sumia, yeah, yeah. Well, how did you know that? I'm sure, I'm sure you did this in another podcast, so you just doing little messages for Sumia. No, but usually I say this is for Sumia. How did you just guess? I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I just know these things. Anyway, je ne pas de colette, and goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Uh, I should go get some bat- Battenberg now. Yeah. I bet you they won't even have Battenberg after this. You finished recording, the whole haven't you? thing. Yeah, oh yeah, shit.